Hi guys, so on Tuesday Boris Johnson was photographed with his Australian counterpart as they signed the UK-Australian trade deal. It was described as historic and a new dawn for both countries. It was something Boris Johnson desperately needed following the news that easing of the restrictions would be postponed for another four weeks at least. Many people around the country were hoping for some good news. So, has he delivered? Spoilers, no. Well, let's look and see what's in it. First of all, we must remember that the details of this deal have been hidden from both the public and Parliament. You know, it's such a great deal that Boris Johnson has decided that only bits and pieces will be released, and what has been released isn't great. So, how will ordinary people benefit from this deal? Well, according to those who have crunched the numbers, it looks like it would be a boost to the UK's GDP of about 0.02%. Wait for it, after 15 years. So we should be seeing the benefits of this deal by the year 2037. I guess it's better than Jacob Rees-Mogg's 50 years, but then to give the right honourable gentleman from the 1800s some credit, he was talking about Brexit in general. The boost, if you want to call it that, is achieved by the elimination of tariffs on exports from the UK and from Australia. This tiny uplift to the economy has been calculated at about 52p per person per year. Not sure what you can actually get with that. Just did a quick Google search and a Snickers bar in Sainsbury's cost 65p. Damn. Now, while fishing was one of the biggest issues before Brexit, in regards to the Australian trade deal, farming took centre stage. So, how will farmers fare in this? We've already covered this before, and it has been confirmed that British farmers will see protections removed via tariff-free imports for 15 years. This is happening via tariff rate quotas and other measures. Remember, tariffs are there to protect domestic industries. Removing them exposes local producers to the will of the market. The Tory government has said on numerous occasions that hormone-treated beef will not be permitted to be sold in UK supermarkets, a government spokesperson said, and I quote, we are absolutely not compromising on our high animal welfare and food standards. The government continues to champion the top quality producer British farmers, both for domestic consumption and overseas. These are just words, however, but there was no mention of these particular safeguards for animal welfare when the government released its official statement on Tuesday. UK farmers are concerned that they will have to compete with farming on an industrial scale which will more than likely drive many of them out of business, ending generations of farming. Harmful practices allowed in Australia, such as moosing, where skin is removed from the sheep, are illegal in the UK. These, however, will be allowed by the agreement. Antibiotic use as growth promoters, while being banned in the UK, are permitted in Australia. Organisations have found that Antibiotic usage is 16 times higher in poultry and 3 times higher in pigs. These practices are permitted by the Australian government. A knock-on effect of mass use of antibiotics in animals is that they play a part in the growing resistance in humans to certain drugs. This means that even routine operations that require post-operational treatment of antibiotics is rendering them less and less effective. The deal doesn't just affect farming with animals, as weed killer and other pesticides that are currently illegal in the UK are likely to be permitted under the deal. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. Ending of tariffs means Australian wines will become cheaper in the UK. Not by a huge amount, but some estimates put the saving at between 7 and 8p a bottle. One trade expert rubbished the benefit, saying that on the one side you are decimating the farming industry, in order to save a few p on a bottle of wine. In one particularly funny Brexit blunder, Boris Johnson's government issued a press release where they were talking about cheaper Australian wine and referred to the label Jacob's Creek. Ironically, it's owned by Pernod Ricard, located in France. Anyway, there is also a benefit for holidaymakers and migrants, I'm sorry, expats, People under the age of 35 will be able to extend their work visas without having to put in hard labour on Australian farms and building sites. So I guess that is a benefit. So what happens next? Will the House of Commons get a vote on this? 
No, they bloody will not. Many commissions have been asking for a deeper look into this deal. MPs have demanded a vote, but Boris Johnson thinks the deal is so great that it doesn't need scrutiny. Let me know in the comments section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?